two, one, zero. This is the record-breaking reaction. Fusion has a strange reputation. It is called the holy grail of energy, yet it is also the punchline of an old joke. Fusion is always 30 years away. But something has changed. Today, the fusion world is busier than it has ever been. Government labs keep pushing, and private companies are racing too, backed by billions of dollars. Everyone wants the same proof, a fusion plant that puts electricity on the grid. If that happens, it could help replace fossil fuels at scale. Let's sort the breakthroughs from the buzz, because the climate clock is ticking and money follows. Why fusion feels urgent? We have built a world that runs on burning things. Coal, oil and gas still provide a huge share of our energy, and replacing that is not a small task. Some experts talk about roughly 3,000 gigawatts of fossil fuel power that needs a cleaner replacement. Wind, solar, storage and grids all will do a lot of the work, but many people still want a source that can run day and night, in any season, without carbon. That is where fusion enters the conversation. Fusion has become the symbol of the hardest promise, net zero without giving up modern life. It is a problem that is brutal, but also worth the pain. The pitch is simple, virtually unlimited fuel, no smoke, and far less long-lived waste than fission. That promise is why governments fund giant machines, and why investors now write giant checks. In some years, private money flowing into fusion has even outpaced federal fusion funding in the United States. There are more than 30 private fusion companies worldwide, and new ones seem to appear every few months with bold ideas. Some engineers love that energy, others roll their eyes at the timelines because the old joke still haunts the field. Still, the goal is clear. Nobody cares about pretty plasma videos forever. The win is boring, stable electricity delivered to the grid, at a cost that can scale for the whole planet. The donut that proved fusion is possible. In Oxford, on a campus packed with physicists, sits JET, the joint European Taurus. A Taurus is just a fancy word for a donut, and that donut shape matters because it helps hold a ring of super hot plasma. JET has been running since the early 1980s, and it became a place where the fusion world learned what works and what breaks. Inside the vessel, cameras see a glow in visible light, but that glow is the coldest part of the plasma. The hottest core is so hot that it does not shine the way your eyes expect. In 1997, JET finally pushed hard enough to run what people would call a proper fusion shot. It produced 16 megawatts of fusion power, roughly the output of a few wind turbines, and it shocked a lot of doubters. Then came the catch. The pulse lasted less than a second. The power ramped up, control slipped, and the plasma crashed. Over the next two decades, the team rebuilt hardware, improved software, and searched for a narrow window of settings that could hold steady. In late 2021, in a tense run of experiments right before Christmas, they tried again and more than doubled the earlier record. This time, they did not just spike. They sustained a strong burn for about five seconds. And in that moment, they could not even hug or high-five because of distance rules. That number sounds tiny, but in fusion, five seconds is a mountain. Why the machine fights back? Fusion is what powers the sun. Hydrogen nuclei smash together and become helium. A tiny bit of mass vanishes in the process, and that missing mass shows up as energy. Do it countless times, and you get starlight. On Earth, we cannot copy the sun's gravity. So we cheat by heating the fuel instead. We start with a gas and pour in so much energy that electrons break loose. That is plasma, the fourth state of matter. You can picture the steps like water turning from ice to liquid to steam, and then beyond. Plasma is common in lightning and neon signs, but fusion plasma is on another level. To make the nuclei fuse often enough, we need temperatures about 10 times hotter than the sun's core, around 100 to 200 million degrees. Heating anything that hot is hard. Holding it is harder. Since the 1930s, scientists have chased ways to confine plasma long enough for useful reactions. A key leap came in the 1960s in the Soviet Union with the Tokamak, a magnetic bottle that tries to keep plasma from touching the wall. 
Modern tokamaks can reach over 100 million degrees, yet one milestone still blocks the road to power plants. Net gain. A reactor must produce more energy than it takes to heat and control the fuel. If you cannot beat that basic math, fusion is a science demo, not an energy source. The giant bet called ITER. JET was never meant to be the final answer. It is a stepping stone towards something much bigger. That bigger step is ITER, an enormous experimental reactor being built in the south of France. ITER is a collaboration of about 35 countries, and it is designed to be the first machine that clearly produces more fusion energy than it consumes to heat the plasma. People involved in the project speak with real confidence, because physics is not magic. It is engineering at terrifying scale. But scale takes time. ITER's first plasma has been planned for 2025, while full deuterium-tritium fusion operations are not expected until around 2035. If ITER were the only plan, fusion would look like a distant dream, and the climate fight does not have the patience for that. This timing gap is exactly why startups keep popping up. They argue that you can build smaller machines, iterate faster, and cut years off the path. Skeptics answer that rushing can create broken promises, and broken promises can poison public support. A more grounded view is that the handoff matters. Governments are good at long research arcs. Private teams may be better at the last mile if they stay honest. Many serious voices put a realistic timeline closer to 20 years, not next year, and not never. A diesel engine version of fusion. One of the most famous alternatives to tokamaks comes from Canada's General Fusion. Instead of trying to hold a steady plasma ring for minutes, they aim for short, repeated bursts. Their concept looks almost steampunk in early prototypes, like an octopus of pipes and pistons. But the analogy is clear. Think of a diesel engine. Fuel is injected, then squeezed until it heats and ignites. General Fusion wants to do a fusion version of that squeeze. They form a cavity inside swirling liquid metal. Into that cavity, they inject a magnetized high-temperature hydrogen plasma. Then an array of drivers compresses the liquid metal inward like a piston stroke. That compression heats the plasma fast, pushing it toward fusion conditions for a brief moment. The hope is that bursts make net gain easier, because you do not need to hold perfect stability forever, only long enough per pulse to extract useful energy. Founded in 2002 and backed by investors including Jeff Bezos, the company has worked for years to make the machine repeatable and scalable. They plan a demonstration plant in Oxford on the same science campus as JET. It will not flood the grid with power, but it is meant to prove that the approach can create fusion in a power plant style environment, not just in a lab. Fast promises, hard reality. Not far from Oxford's fusion scene, another company pitch can sound like science fiction. Helion Energy, near Seattle, says it can skip the usual step of turning fusion heat into steam. Most fusion plans boil water, spin turbines, and make electricity the old-fashioned way. Helion claims it can do direct energy conversion. They compress fusion fuel with magnetic fields, fusion pushes back, and that push expands the field. They compare it to regenerative braking in a car, where motion becomes electricity without a middleman. That bold idea helped attract major investors, including Sam Altman and Peter Thiel, plus a massive funding round. They have also spoken in aggressive timelines, even targeting net electricity from fusion in the 2020S. Across the ocean, first light fusion takes an even stranger path, inspired by inertial confinement. Instead of lasers, they fire a projectile from a gas gun at around 15,000 miles an hour into a carefully designed target. The target focuses the impact into the fusion fuel for a tiny instant. In a future plant, they imagine doing a shot about once every 30 seconds. They have shown fusion in the lab with this method, but their early number was only about 50 neutrons. They admit it is not impressive. For them, the win was that the result matched simulations, giving a map to improve. And here is the tension. Some scientists worry that too many flashy claims will fail, and the whole field will pay the price. Others point to examples like reusable rockets, where private pressure changed what was possible. The safest bet may be a portfolio, careful public research, plus risky private ideas. 
If Fusion arrives, the market is huge, on the order of a trillion dollars a year, and the uses go far beyond lights and phones. Cheap, clean energy could help developing countries reach a higher standard of living without crashing the climate. It could power carbon removal at scale, or even fuel the future industries that sound wild today, like asteroid mining. That is why so many people keep chasing these different paths to the same fire. Fusion may not save us tomorrow, but it is no longer just a science fair dream either. We have tokamaks like JET proving the physics, and ITER is building the first true net gain test at a giant scale. We also have startups trying to compress, crash, and capture fusion in new ways, fueled by urgent climate deadlines and real capital. Some of these companies will fail. A few might change energy forever. The important part is steady progress and honest timelines. Because if we do crack fusion, we hand our kids a cleaner, richer future. And that is worth the struggle.